name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered on this most beautiful day to celebrate the new Pentecost. It's on this day that the church started when God sent his Holy Spirit to his church. So today is our birthday as a church, as a body of Christ. And so on this birthday of our lives, we pray that there may be a new infusion of the Spirit on our leadership and our membership. That God may touch the minds and hearts of all those who are still waiting on the fringes to get involved in this movement of grace to heal the world of the pain and hurt to rid the world of the darkness that encircles us, to heal us of the divisions. We pray that the Holy Spirit may fill us with a new enthusiasm for love and for the ministry of Christ. And so we pray in this Mass for our Pope, we pray for our bishops, pray for our religious brothers and sisters, pray for leaders of other world religions, we may all come together to forge a path for humanity. Also want to pray for our patients here at World to Read. Pray for our doctors, our nurses, and all those who provide care here. That God may bless their ministry. Pray for those who have asked our prayers, especially priests who are sick from this virus. Pray, dear God, that you may help them find healing and be restored to their flock. To Almighty God, for Margaret, who is in palliative care, we am asked that for whatever number of days or weeks that she has here with us, that you may watch over and free her from her fears and give her whatever grace she needs for these final days. Pray also for, for those who are protesting right now in our streets. Our country is hurting, oh God, that we do not want this violence and this destruction right now. We need your spirit to touch the hearts and minds of all those out there that we could do whatever we want to do and do it responsibly and do it in a way that protects people's heart and businesses and lives. We ask, oh God, that you may help us as a nation to heal through this time. And to prepare ourselves for this mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have read this sin through my faults and in my word, and what I have done and what I am going to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord my God. Now, Almighty God of mercy on us, may forgive us our sins, may bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that work, that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of your believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the 
Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared on them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now were the, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement. They asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own languages of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through its many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven. And whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear friends, today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, is Pentecost Sunday. It is the day when the church officially started because the Spirit is the life given principle. There is no life without the spirit in everything every living thing must have a spirit that gives it life without a spirit is only um, a mass of body and so the church needed the spirit presence of the spirit the imparting of the spirit to give it life when, when god created adam and eve it was until he gave them the bread of his spirit that they became scripture said they became a living a living man so, the Spirit's presence on this day at Pentecost, the first Pentecost, set aflame a body that was not alive, wasn't alive. And so, that is very important, you know, for, for our lives. Especially at this time, as I'm thinking about the time in which we find ourselves, it fits so very well with what was happening. Scripture tells us how the disciples at this time were in fear. They were in fear of the other. And, and, and that, that just got me thinking. When we make someone else other, that means not part of us. You realize the, tr the trusted 11 and the women were in one place. They trusted each other. They had no fear for each other. But they feared the Jews because the Jews were the other. And so they did not want to be at risk where the others were. And today in our society, we have otherized the other in such a way that we live in fear for the other. We don't live trusting that the other has goodwill or good intent. And so we are now align the fear of the other to define how we relate with each other. I don't believe that if we trusted each other, people will go out and do and react the way they are reacting and destroying people's lives and life and businesses and livelihoods. I also don't believe that if we, if we trusted each other, that someone will so cold-bloodedly take another's life. I don't believe that. Because an arrest would never have led to death if we trusted each other. So fear is at the center of what was happening that prevented the apostles to do their job. They were afraid of the other. They were unable to be there for the other until the Holy Spirit descended. Scripture tells us when the Spirit descended, they went out immediately. 
Now, this way, guys, we are afraid of the other. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit that breaks our fear, our fear for the other. And, and how, how much do we need that spirit right now? And, and why does the spirit have power to break our fear? Because our scripture tells us the spirit knows the mind of God. And when we are touched by the grace of the Holy Spirit, we no longer see other as the other. We see them as the image of the Almighty God, the God that, we, that created us, the God we represent. We see the other more as ourselves, not someone different from us. That's what the Holy Spirit did. Now realize in that first reading, the Holy Spirit also did something by, by that, that one incident. It united people. Scripture said people came from everywhere. Now, I can't even mention all the names of all of those places as far as Africa, as far as Libya. People of every gathered together and the Spirit was able to communicate. That means break the divisions of languages by communicating in such a way that there was unity. That means people were able to understand. If you had the verb there was, we are able to understand. And how much do we need that right now? One of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit is understanding. And if we learn to understand each other, and learn to understand how God intended for us to operate and function with each other. I think that will help unity because understanding, wherever there is understanding, people are united. Wherever there is misunderstanding, people are divided. So it isn't only fear that makes us divided or fear that keeps others apart from us. It is also the fact that I misunderstand you, whether it's intentional or just because I am not making enough effort to try to understand you. But lack of understanding also creates division and creates suspicion and creates every kind of thing that can breed an atmosphere where people can do terrible things to others without conscience and without guilt. And, and so we need the Holy Spirit at this time, not just in the church, but I think our nation and our world needs that new infusion of the Holy Spirit to help us seek understanding and hear each other, even though we all speak different languages and have different races and have different religions and have different orientations and have different cultural backgrounds, that the Spirit can create that atmosphere where we understand each other and not have to leave and almost escalate our misunderstanding of the other. So that's something else that I see in that text. And, and don't we need that right now? I think we do. So if there's anything at this time, I think we need to pray. Pray for the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit is not one of the blessed, the persons of the blessed trinity that we are very used to. I don't know how many people spend 10 minutes praying for the Holy Spirit every day in their lives. We more talk to the Lord Jesus. We more talk to our blessed mother. We all speak to God our Father. But God gave us the Spirit to help us. When Jesus was about to leave, he said to the disciples, Do not be afraid. I will send you another advocate to be with you. And he was going to be with you forever. And, and realize Jesus calls the Holy Spirit. I like to go through those titles. He calls the Holy Spirit the advocate who pleads our cause. That means he stands before us every day. He is like your, your defense attorney, standing before God every day and telling God how much you need God's blessings. It's almost like he's pleading for God, for God to shower graces and blessings on you every day. Telling God, yes, my daughter, my son deserves it. That's what your advocate does. To, quit, to acquit you of guilt and make sure you get the benefit of justice. And so when Jesus said, that the Holy Spirit is the advocate. Don't we need the Holy Spirit every morning? You wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit of God, please be my advocate today. Just plead my cause. Fight for me against the enemy, against the devil, against everything that will come against me. Fight for me and plead my cause before the Almighty God. And as St. Paul says, the Holy Spirit prays in words that we could never, ever articulate because he understands the mind of God. We should, we should, create space in our spirituality 
for the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, and to direct everything we do. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the helper. Who doesn't need a helper? I don't know anyone in this life who does not need a helper. It doesn't matter how strong you are, you do need a, you need, you need a helper at some point in your life. Whether the helper is like a mentor who knows something you don't know, or the helper is like a doctor who brings you cure, or a nurse who cares for you, or someone who brings, provides counsel or guidance, or just brings you the blessing of God like a Eucharist, like a Eucharistic minister. But every one of us does need a helper. And the Lord Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit as a helper. And yet we have this resource that is unused, untapped, never brought into our toolbox. And so as we celebrate Pentecost, we are reminded that we do have as a church, we do have as God's people, this outstanding, super amazing resource that is willing to be used. God, Jesus called the Holy Spirit, somewhere else he says, the comforter and the counselor. Don't, don't we need good judgment? If we had good judgment and prudence, that's another, another, another thing that the Holy Spirit brings. Good judgment and prudence. That means the ability to judge wisely between one thing and another. And good judgment or prudence helps us to make good decisions at every moment. Think about how many poor and bad decisions you made in your life. All of those decisions I made in my life that were poor and bad could have been avoided if I allowed the Spirit to lead and to provide counsel and good judgment and prudence. And so, dear friends, we would be the losers in all of this if we do not make the Spirit the friend that Jesus gave us, the advocate that he gave us, the paraclete that he gave us, the counselor that he gave us, one who walks with us. And somewhere else he calls him the teacher, teacher of all truth. So as we go through um, Pentecost, let it not just be a one-day event that we celebrate one day in 365 days, or six, six days in a leap year. It is something, it is some experience that we must live every day, every day of your life. You wake up and call, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and let them be created. You could just say even something as quickly as that and just get, be, just put yourself in that mindset and see what the Spirit will do. If you doubt me, try it for the next one year and see how different your life experiences will be and see how different the person that you would be. Because if I have the Spirit of God in me, there will be no fear of the other. That means I see the other for who the other is. A child of God like me and I treat the other without fear but with a desire to understand and to build alliances of unity not divisions so at this moment in our country dear friends let us pray pray for our leadership pray for our followership pray for leaders at all levels of government pray for every child of God here in this nation God may help us allow ourselves open ourselves to be touched by the Spirit. We must free ourselves from our self-imprisonment, like the apostles. Because until I free myself from my own self-imposed prison, I will never be able to be there for the other. So we must free ourselves. Whatever it is, and what, wherever it is, and I have imprisoned myself, unable to see whether the person is black, Asian, white, whatever, sex, sex differentiation, straight, um, same sex, whatever. Small imprisonment that you have made for yourself and it's making you impossible to understand the other. Ask the Holy Spirit, free me from my self-imposed imprisonment. I want to be able to see the other as they are. I want to be able to encounter the other as they are, as God encounters them. Not as my little imprisonment forces me to. Dear God, we ask that your Holy Spirit May fill the minds of your people. May fill and touch the spirits of our nation right now. May heal the division and the pain and the darkness and the hate that is spewed out right now. Help us, O oh God, and speak your peace into our hearts. Amen.
So I would like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God and not man, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, let us lift our minds and our hearts. Psalm 37 tells us, cast your burdens onto the Lord because he cares for you. Let us bring our burdens before God and ask that he may hear us. The response to a prayer of the faithful is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit and answer our call to bring about reconciliation, common ground, and a rejection of the false notion of scarcity in a world of abundance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may be dedicated to protecting the lives and inherent dignity of all they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in places in the world affected by extreme weather and natural disasters, and for an increased awareness of and response to the threat of climate change, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants, refugees, and all other strangers in our midst, that they may find strength in our concern for justice, and that they may seek to understand the many tongues spoken in our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our graduates and their families as they prepare this summer for new beginnings, that they may be assured of your presence and the support of this community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially those who have died of the virus, and those who have died alone, unloved, and unmourned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And now we add our own intentions. And for all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother, as we come to the end of the month of our Blessed Mother, let us ask our prayers as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, for punishment of the Jew. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in the day of Don then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our Lord Jesus. O Clement, O Lord, and O Spirit of Amen. Merciful God, hear this consent we have lifted before you. Listen to all the others we carry every day in your heart, in our hearts. May your peace calm our anxieties, our fears, and our pain.
Let's say that, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of the men have become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today. On those you made your ad adopted children. By uniting them to the one to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth into profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they attend. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep with the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. For me, to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior Jesus. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, say the word my, my soul shall be healed. On this Pentecost day, where many of God's children are unable to participate in the body and blood of Christ, we pray, O oh God, that your spirit they bring this ministry of your Eucharist to nurture your, your hearts and their souls wherever they are and are worshipping you on this day. May they feel the nourishment and healing that comes from your grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us wherever you are, worshiping God from today. May God watch over and fill you with the touch and grace of His Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, 
Today is Pentecost. Please pray for our nation. If that's all you can do, please pray for our nation. These are not good times. Especially in the context of this virus, these are not good times for people to be doing what they're doing right now. Please pray for our country. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To the prayers of our blessed mother. May God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.